I'm Jay Snepperson, and it's time for this month's National Park News Roundup. From Yellowstone to Death Valley to Joshua Tree, flooding events have reshaped the landscape at many of America's national parks, but it's the lack of water that's the most concerning. According to U.S. Drought Monitor statistics, 40% or more of the contiguous United States has been in moderate drought or worse for the last 97 weeks. Last month, we talked about three human remains showing up at the newly revealed former lake bottom along the shores of Lake Mead as the lake level continues to reduce. Two more have been found since, a striking reminder of how much the lake has dropped. Lake Mead and Lake Powell are human-made lakes along the Colorado River. They're beautiful recreation areas that are part of the national park system, but more importantly, they provide water to much of the southwestern United States. As reservoir levels drop, the federal government tasked those states with coming up with a plan to cut water usage dramatically. Talks between the states failed, and now the Department of the Interior has stepped in and is forcing cuts in water allocations. Downstream releases from Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams, which created Lakes Powell and Mead, will be reducing beginning in January. That's going to cut Arizona's water allocation by 21%. Nevada's by 8% and Mexico's by 7%. But due to the way these agreements were written back when we were in a historical wet period, California will see no cuts. According to Arizona Congressman Greg Stanton, California's Colorado River region increased water usage nearly 41% in April of 2022 compared to April of 2020. The South Coast, including Los Angeles County, increased usage by 25%. Quote, the federal government has failed to offer a plan that requires all states to make the cuts necessary to save the Colorado from system collapse, Stanton said. Today's announcement merely kicks the can down the road and risks turning this crisis into catastrophe. Seven Southern California counties rely on the river for water and hydroelectric power, and 600,000 acres of California farmland draw on it for irrigation. California gets more water from the Colorado River than any other state. The cuts are meant to protect the two major dams from structural damage and to keep their ability to generate electric power. That's how dire the situation is at the moment. Meanwhile, monsoonal rains have reawakened flora and fauna in the Mojave National Preserve since the July 30th event that brought six inches of rain to some areas of the park. Average rainfall for August is typically 1.2 inches. More monsoonal rains are forecast for the next week according to the National Weather Service. Mild temperatures and vibrant green foliage have helped the reemergence of wildlife sightings. White-lined sphinx moths, California patch butterflies, horned lizards, rabbits, desert tortoise, and bighorn sheep have been frequently observed by park staff over the last few weeks. Typically, the month of August is a time of muted desert landscapes, aridity, and scarcity. All of the preserve's paved roads were closed for nearly two weeks because of the flood damage. Driving through the preserve remains hazardous for both humans and the wildlife they encounter. This episode of News from the Parks is supported by ParkWolf, the ultimate app for visiting U.S. national parks. With ParkWolf, you can view upcoming places and amenities as you drive through the park, locate the nearest gas, food, bathrooms, and pullover points. ParkWolf's wildlife maps show you the best times and places to see or avoid wildlife, along with a feed of the latest wildlife sightings and photos from the parks. ParkWolf even makes it possible for you to view your live location and direction on official park maps while staying up to date on current MPS alerts and advisories. ParkWolf keeps working even if you lose service. To learn more, download the ParkWolf app for iPhone free from the Apple App Store today. Grand Canyon National Park has been experiencing water issues of its own. Mandatory water conservation measures have been in place at the South Rim, but those restrictions have now been lifted as the park's water storage has reached an acceptable level on August 15th. However, the water at certain rest houses along trails will remain off until crews are able to complete repairs to a damaged pipe. The park is reminding visitors that day hikers and backpackers should always be prepared to carry drinking water or be able to filter or treat creek water for drinking purposes. Death Valley National Park remains closed after recent flooding washed out roads and left visitors and staff stranded. Officials say that most of the top tourist spots in the park will reopen on Saturday, August 20th. 
And Yellowstone is making dramatic progress in its recovery efforts in order to reconnect the northern entrances to their respective gateway communities. If you're headed to Yellowstone, this may be a very good season for it. Yellowstone hosted 596,000 plus visits in July, a 45% decrease from July of 2021, and a 36% decrease from July of 2019, the last pre-COVID year. That's probably not much of a surprise since many visitors canceled their trips after hearing about the flooding and fuel prices have many people leery of long trips. So far in 2022, the park has hosted 1.8 million visitors, down 30% from 2021. A story just broke via the Associated Press out of Yellowstone. Moments before I recorded this episode, a park employee spotted part of a foot in a shoe floating in a hot spring, leading to the temporary closure of the West Thumb Geyser Basin. The area has since reopened. There's no additional information, but the Park Service is investigating. In an episode a few months ago, we talked about a new plan to bring in revenue to the historically free Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is the most visited of the 63 national parks in the nation by nearly double. Well, now that plan is official parking tags will be required to be displayed on any motor vehicle parked within the park boundary beginning March 1st, 2023. It's pretty affordable though, $5 for a daily parking tag, $15 for a parking tag for up to seven days, and $40 for an annual parking tag. All revenue will stay within the park. The proposal was initially announced in April and the public was encouraged to formally submit its comments. Over 15,000 comments were overwhelmingly positive, 85% expressed either strong support or included constructive ideas to improve the program. The park says that none voiced opposition to the fee itself. Use of all park roads will remain toll free. Parking tags will not be required for motorists who pass through the area or who park vehicles for less than 15 minutes. The tags will not guarantee a parking spot at a specific location. Parking will continue to be available on first come first serve basis and roadside parking will be eliminated in certain areas to improve motorist and pedestrian safety, and increase traffic flow. Backcountry camping fees will also be increasing to $8 per night with a maximum of $40 per camper. Front country campsites will increase to $30 per night for primitive sites and $36 for electrical hookups. And yes, the park has introduced a few new electrical hookups this year. Over the last decade, visitation to the Great Smoky Mountains increased by 57% to a record 14.1 million in 2021. A Park Service employee is getting an award for doing a very dirty job. Matthew Snyder is the compost crew leader at Grand Canyon National Park, and he's been selected as the recipient of the Excellent in Natural Resource Stewardship Through Maintenance Award. In 2021, Snyder led the Grand Canyon National Park compost crew in the evacuation of 22 tons of human compost from the more than 28 composting toilet facilities dispersed throughout the park. Under Snyder's supervision, the team of four hike more than seven miles per day in a variety of weather conditions, ranging from temperatures well over 118 degrees to well below freezing. Donning full body suits and protective gear, they transfer human compost out of the park's remote backcountry, which are helicoptered to Flagstaff, Arizona, and utilized as fertilizer for a nursery. Snyder has served the National Park Service for 20 years as a trail crew worker, trail supervisor, and now compost lead. A new America's National Park series from National Geographic is coming to Disney Plus, narrated by none other than Garth Brooks. It's shot using cutting edge technology, including long lens cinematography, remote camera traps, and the latest high resolution drones. The series captures not only stunning landscapes and frozen moments in time, but intimate glimpses into the lives of the charismatic and intriguing animals that inhabit our country's famous and lesser known parks. We're going to have the show's producers on an upcoming episode of the America's National Parks podcast. But in the meantime, here's a sneak peek. The Grand Canyon. A chasm 277 miles long. Even in winter, what appears barren supports life. female mountain lion shelters from the cold with her eight-month-old daughter. She can't rest for long 
with an extra mouth to feed. Finding food is tough at the best of times. But a good hunt can provide for a week or more. Elk are their main prey. The canyon limits their escape routes. Every day is a battle for survival in one of America's grandest national parks. America's National Parks premieres on Disney Plus August 31st as part of National Geographic's new annual National Parks Week event. Finally, I want to share with you the news of our new book. It's a journal for kids visiting national parks. It's aimed at the six to nine year old range and contains lots of activities and journal prompts for four visits to any national park. It comes out August 30th and I'll share the link in the description where you can pre-order it for $9.99 on Amazon. That's it for this month's National Park News. We'll see you next time.